Hey guys, I am back. Now, finally, getting to my review of Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. Here we go. So, as I mentioned previously, I do have a e-arc for Shadow of the Gods. Thank you again, Nat Galleon Orbit, for letting me read this early in return. Of course, for an honest review. And I'm just going to jump out right ahead of it. I love this book. Uh, I, I have talked about it briefly in a recent wrap-up video or TBR or something. Um, it was awesome. I, I'm pointing at a book down here that's not Shadow of the Gods for some reason. But this book was great. And I already have it pre-ordered in hardcover from Book Depository because I do want that hardcover. The illustration on the cover is so good. Um, and just having it on my Kindle just, yeah, just doesn't feel right. So I will have it in hardcover in its glorious full form. But what is Shadow of the Gods? So this is John Gwynn's Norse-inspired fantasy series. Now, if you are any at all familiar with my feelings towards John Gwynn and his writing, I absolutely adore his writing. I just spoke about how I bought A Blood and Bone in my recent book haul video a couple days ago, and I just, I'm fully engaged with his writing. I am all in on his stories. I'm super jealous of his sons for already reading book two of this story, but whatever, you know, they're his kids. I guess they get to read it early. Fine. After the gods warred and drove themselves to extinction, the cataclysm of their fall shattered the land of Vigorio. Now a new world is rising where power-hungry Jarls feud and monsters stalk the woods and mountains. A world where the bones of the dead gods still hold great power for those brave or desperate enough to seek them out. Now as whispers of war echo across the mountains and fjords, fate follows in the footsteps of three people, a huntress on a dangerous quest, a noblewoman who has rejected privilege in pursuit of battle fame, and a thrall who seeks vengeance among the famed mercenaries known as the Bloodsworn. All three will shape the fate of the world as it once more falls under the shadow of the gods. So that is this book in a nutshell. So who are we talking about here? We are talking about three main POV characters. And I mentioned previously that this reminded me a lot of First Law. And the way that I am saying that is not in the writing style, not in the voice that the author gives to the characters. It's very much John Gwynn's writing. It's the same easy to read, action packed, um, great, you know, flowing dialogue, stuff like that, that is in The Faithful and the Fallen. But the reason I say it's more like First Law is one, there's only three POVs. You do not have dozens and dozens and dozens of main uh, of named characters as you do in Faithful and the Fallen and the Banished Lands. You're not remembering a ton of different locations. This is much more small in scope, at least for now. I have a feeling it's going to grow way beyond that because of the whole nature of the shadow of the gods, these you know ancient beings and gods that existed that still hold power in the universe. There's more to this story than just you know, these characters' lives, right? So you follow our three main protagonists who, right off the bat, I'm just gonna mention her, Orca. She is a badass Norse Viking warrior mom. And she is kind of the heart and soul of this book, in my opinion. She is out for revenge over the kidnapping, essentially, of her son. And she goes through hell going after him this is like Liam Neeson and Taken trying to find his daughter. This is John Wick trying to, you know, get revenge and murder everybody in his path. This is very much that in a Norse setting. She doesn't take shit from anybody. She is a total badass. She's very headstrong and just her loyalty and love for her family and her child. She will do anything to get her kid back. She is definitely the best standout character far and away of this entire book so far. And you have Elvar, who is mentioned as the noble who turns her back, turns her nose up to that life and goes the warrior route instead. And she joins the Battlegrim, which are sort of in just another warrior faction in this world. And that immediately shows you that women in this world are not typical fantasy roles that they are in a lot of other books. This is Viking inspired, so they're very much warriors. It's not like a weird thing to have females in your war band or anything like that. They are well ingrained in this part of society and she joins that. She is sort of in over her head at first, but she really grows into that role, of course, as she grows as a character. 
And then lastly, you have Varg, who is the thrall mentioned in that synopsis, who is also sort of out for revenge. Uh, his sort of backstory is that he's trying to get to the bottom of who killed his sister and wants revenge for her. So he joins up with the Bloodsworn, which this is the Bloodsworn saga. But what's great about this is John Gwynn's writing, his characters are top notch. Each of these has a distinct voice in this book, whether it be Orca and her love and compassion for her kid and just how she is literally willing to do whatever it takes to get to her child. Varg, who's sort of inexperienced, but wants so badly, like he's got that fire inside of him that want to, to that's like eating him inside that he just, he wants to be able to prove himself and get stronger. Can't help but root for him. And Elvar is sort of finding her way in, in her new role, uh, sort of, you know, against her family's will because of her nobility. But so these three main characters are incredibly interesting in themselves and the way that this book is written, it flows very well. Like I said, it's a smaller scope story and that's where I, I pull the parallels of First Law is that this does not have a plot in, in the traditional sense of here is what all these characters are setting out to do. They're kind of on their own quests and you sort of see things towards the end of the book sort of unfold and come together and converge much like the blade itself did where I have a feeling it's going to go you know, beyond that as well. Um, and sort of have like a more, not necessarily streamlined, but more cohesive main plot in book two, whenever that comes out next year, probably. Initially, right off the bat, what I love though is, so I, I'm a big Vikings fan. I love just the, the lore around Viking and Norse mythology in all kinds of video games. I, just, I love Viking characters when I play Total War uh, or when I play Warhammer. I love like the Norska tribes. I love just the, the whole like Viking aesthetic. When I used to play tabletop, I was all about the space wolves where they are space Marines, but they usually don't have helmets on and they have like wolf fur draped over their, their suits and everything. And just like everything about that is super cool. Um, just the, the whole, <laughs> the, the whole aesthetic just really speaks to me. And, and what's good is we have great shows like The Last Kingdom and Vikings to actually pull sort of images from. So I picture a lot of that while I'm reading these. And I mentioned that in Faithful in the Fallen as well, it's even more fitting here. Uh, you've got the shield wall once again, because the Vikings fight with shield walls. And as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, John Gwynn's action writing is so good. You, you kind of get a feel that you're there. And the way that he does this is he, he puts you in different perspectives of each battle and you are in the thick of it. Like you have people in the middle of a shield wall, butting right up against somebody else's shield. They're stabbing around each other. Like it's violent, it's up close, it's personal. His writing style is fantastic for the action that he writes, whether it be a small skirmish, whether it be uh, just humans interacting, whether it be some kind of fantasy creatures, which there are a lot of fantasy <laughs> creatures in this. You've got worms, you've got for, uh, freaking frost spiders, which are goddamn terrifying. They, they're they like in this this part of the, the, the woods that exists in this world, this forest that you're not supposed to go to. These frost spiders exist, which is terrifying in itself because they're gigantic spiders, but they sting you and it basically cools your blood and then they suck it out. It's disgusting. So that's terrifying. Uh, there's all, of course, uh, dragons, all, all this, you know, all the fantasy goodness here. There's a lot of different fantasy creatures in this. So I'm really excited to see that expanded on, which helps just really bring the world and the mythology to life because there's all these, you know, fables that exist. There's certain prophecies that exist. I just love everything about the sort of fantasy elements that, that are in here, even if they, they sort of start out more in the background. Like there's, I, I wouldn't say there's a magic system, but there are these people that are called tainted who sort of have some kind of power in battle. They almost turn like, demon-like in a sense. They are like faster and stronger and sort of not human a lot of the times. And there's this like whole plot that sort of revolves around like tainted children and things like that. So that's just like a really cool thing that exists in this world already. This book hits on all sorts of themes of family, loyalty, living to fight another day. Like don't let your pride sort of get in the way of, of survival. Uh, you can always come back and take vengeance later. You don't have to go all out, you know, balls to the wall, Tao style, Rage of Dragon. Overall though, I mean, if if you are familiar with John Gwynn's writing, he writes a very approachable uh, book to read. It's super fast paced. 
you're introduced and then you're you know you're introduced to your characters and then you're sort of off to the off to the races this does not let up at times especially when you're following orca because she is just a mad woman out for revenge just killing everybody <laughs> Uh, but the each each character plot thread is really interesting. The dialogue is engaging, even with the. There's a lot of straight up like language that I can't read because they're speaking some sort of. I don't. I I'm gonna guess that John Gwynn did his research and based it off of some ancient Norse language that existed that I just I don't speak. So there are plenty of words that I don't understand. But but each of these little details, the there's a lot more description in this book. There's tons of character description you know what these people look like you know what their you know their surroundings and their settings look like and you know a lot of people can picture what a jarl sitting you know in his sort of uh house would look like all these things really just come to life and i feel like he did a great job of making this feel like a lived-in world my main struggle early on in the faithful and the fallen was there was not a lot of description of characters so i didn't know what a lot of people look like i couldn't really picture a lot of things i feel like he has grown as an author since writing that and has done a fantastic job of that here. Uh, the characters, once again, knock it out of the park. I think Orca is easily one of the best characters of his that I've read from all of his books. Uh, I'm gonna see what of Blood, and Bone, of Blood and Bone has to offer, but Orca is, if you follow me on Twitter, I was raving about Orca, she's a badass. Action's good, it's violent, it's bloody. Just everything that I love about fantasy, this is just oozing with it. So definitely go out and read this book. It comes out in May. It's not that far off. It's it's super, super awesome. And it's not a 1,100 pages. It's like 550 or 600 pages, something like that. I don't know. My Kindle didn't really exactly have a, a correct count. But I'm super grateful to have read this early. I really want to talk spoilers about this. There's, there's so much going on here that... I really just am excited for you all to read. I know Jimmy has read it and reviewed it, Patrick. I'm sure there's others. A lot of us have read this early and I think a lot of people are starting to get their reviews up, but it's, it's definitely a good one as well with your time. I love John Gwynn's writing. Highly, highly recommend this. So definitely get this one when it comes out. And just, again, I'm mean, just like this cover. Look, just look at it. It's, look at it. So that's gonna do it for Shadow of the Gods. Spoiler free review buy this book when it comes out it's good so like and subscribe as always do hit up patreon if you want to support the channel financially and what i do here that's always optional but always appreciated talk some john gwynn with me in discord though i would love to see you there at least drop me a comment down below let me know if you're excited for this book if you hate john gwynn's writing somehow uh whatever your thoughts are i would really love to hear them and i can't wait to talk with you all about this book further so that's gonna wrap it up for this one guys keep reading